I'm Liz Priestman, the host of IDG's From the Top interview series. Joining me today is Jordan Trimble, the Director, President, and CEO of Sky Harbor Resources, a leading uranium exploration company advancing projects in Canada's renowned Athabasca Basin. With global energy markets at a pivotal moment, geopolitical tensions, and a growing demand for clean, reliable energy have put nuclear power and the uranium sector into the spotlight. Sky Harbor is uniquely positioned to benefit from this shift, driving innovation and exploration in one of the world's most stable and resource-rich regions. Welcome, Jordan. Thanks for having me. So Sky Harbor has positioned itself as a leader in uranium exploration in Canada. Can you share more about the company's vision and how it aligns with the current global demand for clean and sustainable energy? Yeah, absolutely. So Sky Harbor over the last decade or so has uh, uh, built up what is by acreage, the third largest mineral tenure holding of uranium properties in northern Saskatchewan, the Athabasca Basin, which is the highest grade depository of uranium in a world. And, and uh, this region is going to become an ever more important part of supplying, in particular, the West with nuclear fuel going forward. Um, we have over uh, 1.4 million acres uh, across 29 uranium properties scattered all throughout the Athabasca, projects ranging from earlier stage, more grassroots exploration properties right through to more advanced stage exploration assets that either host small uranium deposits and or have high grade, so multi-percent uranium or U308 in previous drilling. So you get the full spectrum, if you will, of exploration properties in the company. Jordan, your flagship projects in the Athabasca Basin are attracting a lot of attention. Can you elaborate on what sets these projects apart and any recent updates and milestones that you can share? Uh, we're very much focused on two of those more advanced stage exploration assets, our Russell and Moore Lake projects, which are strategically located in between uh, the largest, richest uranium mine in the world, uh, called the MacArthur River Mine, just to the north of us, the Key Lake Mill, which uh, processes the ore from that mine, just to the south west of us, and our largest uh, corporate and strategic shareholder a company called Denison Mines is developing a project called the Wheeler River Project, uh, just located adjacent to the west of our Russell Lake project. So those two assets uh, are really the focal points for the company. That's where we're gonna be spending most of our time, money and efforts in 2025. We're planning our largest uh, single year drill campaign uh, coming up uh, in uh, the next 12 months to continue advancing and unlocking value at these two projects. Jordan, when we spoke last, you hinted at the project generator model. Can you give us an update on that, as well as some of the partnerships that you're working on and overall plans for 2025? We carry out what's called uh, prospect ge uh, prospect generation. So we uh, look to farm out non-core or secondary projects in our project portfolio to partner companies that will then come in and earn in on these projects over a period of time. In order to do so, they make cash and share payments to Sky Harbor, as well as fund the exploration and development at the project. So we've recently added another three partner companies that brings the total to 10 total partners, uh, spending uh, upwards of over $90 million in combined project consideration, assuming that they complete their respective earnings. So as you said, yes, we're uniquely positioned um, as a Canadian explore co and prospect generator to benefit from rising uranium prices uh, and uh, again aligning ourselves to be a, le uh, a, a leading exploration company in the West, uh, really in the business of finding new deposits, uh, de risking these projects, and ultimately providing the next generation of nuclear fuel, in particular for Western consumption. It's an incredible, uh, very exciting year ahead. Um, in terms of the Russian-Ukraine conflict and broader geopolitical shifts, they've highlighted the importance of energy security, particularly in diversifying nuclear fuel supply chains. How did these trends impact Sky Harbor's strategy and the uranium market overall? Well, it's having a major impact on the global uranium and nuclear fuel market. We've just seen Russia uh, announce in uh, retaliation to some legislation earlier this year uh, that they would uh, uh, there is a temporary uh, export ban on enriched uranium product from Russia to the United States. That was in uh, response to uh, legislation passed earlier this year in which the U.S. Um, uh, is is banning the import of nuclear fuel 
uh, from Russia um, starting in uh, 2028. There are waivers up until then for U.S. utilities if they require that Russian nuclear fuel. But bottom line is um, we're seeing the, the the ties cut here between the two countries. And uh, over the last uh, few decades, Russia's supplied the U.S. with over 25 uh, percent of its nuclear fuel requirements. So this is going to force U.S. nuclear utilities uh, to look elsewhere for their uh, nuclear fuel and uranium needs. And again, this is going to benefit uh, U.S., uh, Canadian, and Australian companies uh, as the U.S. is still the largest consumer of uh, uranium and nuclear fuel uh, with uh, just over 90 operating reactors. Um, and then if we look uh, globally right now uh, at the supply demand of this commodity, um, there is a major structural supply deficit that's formed uh, to the tune of uh, 40 to 50 million pounds annually. So there's annual consumption or demand of uh, about 200 million pounds, uh, yet primary mine supply uh, is only about 150 to 160 million pounds. And when you look at that uh, it, through the lens of East versus West or BRICS nations versus non-BRICS nations, you'll see that most of the uh, production globally uh, is Eastern production. So Kazakhstan represents over 40% of global primary mine supply, Russia, Uzbekistan, parts of Africa, um, you know, these countries uh, in aggregate um, account for uh, the majority of uranium production globally. So the, the West has a lot uh, to make up for here in the coming years, uh, at, given that uh, uranium and nuclear fuel consumption is still, um, uh, the majority of it is still in Western Europe, Canada, the US, South Korea, Japan. Uh, so uh, again, we're going to have to see new projects being developed in the West. Um, uh, something else worth noting on the supply side is that we have seen production guidance downgrades. Uh, we've seen misses uh, from a, a number of uh, larger and smaller producers in recent years. So the risks to the supply side for uranium and for this commodity uh, far uh, outweigh or exceed the risks to the demand side. Jordan, talk to us more about the growing demand for uranium. There's been a lot of talk in the news lately of big tech companies chasing uh, nuclear energy deals in order to meet the growing demands of generative AI and other data centers. Uh, share more on that, if you could, please. Demand side. The demand is growing at a very steady clip. The advent of small modular reactors and, and, and in particular their, their use in uh, powering uh, data centers and, and, and the AI industry going forward. We've seen uh, notable agreements recently announced uh, by the big tech companies, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, Meta, the, the list goes on. Uh, they've uh, identified nuclear energy uh, as a key component in, in generating the electricity and the energy necessary to power these data centers and their AI businesses. Uh, and I think we'll see that trend continue. We'll see that have a major impact on the uranium market going forward. So the demand side uh, is very exciting. It's growing at a very steady clip. Uh, we just recently saw at the COP um, conference uh, this year, uh, another six countries uh, announced their endorsement for tripling nuclear capacity uh, between now and 2050. So that's over, uh, that's 31 countries total now uh, that are a part of, of that declaration. Uh, so a very exciting time on the demand side, yet the supply side is tenuous at best as the market continues to bifurcate east versus west. Jordan, thank you always for, for your insights and, and sharing your knowledge that runs so deep in uranium and, and the resource sector in general. And um, again, looks like a very promising year ahead with all that's going on, both in the project um, that's with Sky Harbor, as well as the broader market. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to hearing an update soon. Mm -hmm.